Welcome to the Journey Church message replay. If you were not able to be with us live when this message was delivered, or you just want to take a deeper dive into God's Word, this is where you can find the latest message delivered here at Journey. Be sure to click the subscribe button on the podcast service you are listening to or the video channel you are watching right now. That way you won't miss anything because you will be notified every time a new message is uploaded. Our goal here at Journey is to help you discover your real life purpose in Jesus so that you can make a difference in your world. This message you're about to hear is going to both encourage and challenge you to do just that. If you like what you hear, then go ahead and hit that like and share buttons below and leave us a comment as well. There are more ways to contact us down in the notes section. If you want to know more about us, then you just have to search Journey Church Eva online and on social media. Now. Get ready and let God speak to you through this message today. Father, we want to thank you for already setting an atmosphere of the power of God in this place and worship God. And now we ask that this word literally come off the pages, into our ears, into our hearts, stir us up where we can make a difference, God, when we leave this place today, Father. Lord, we love you and we declare your word is true in this house. Everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to start off today by showing you a few uh, images on the screen here in just a moment. And when the images come up, let me know what you think of them and let me know if you can relate to them and see what they are. Let's go ahead with the first one. How many knows what that is? What is that? What do they represent? Shopping is where you buy all your stuff from China. Okay? Go ahead with the next image. How many know what that is? What does that represent? It represents what I have up here on my platform. It represents pads, and most of you communicate in some form or fashion with that. And if you're not in the Apple world, just bless your heart. <laughs> oh, you Andrew, no, it's all good, okay? If you can communicate, it's all good. But again, worldwide known, everybody knows what that is. So go ahead and put the next one up. How many know what that is? What does that represent? Drama, of course, yes. Everybody's drama played out live in front of the world. Right there you go. Put up the last one. Nike. You know, what the, Nike, yeah. What does it represent? The shoes, the clothes, the sportswear, the helmets, the team, okay? <laughs> now, the thing about that is nothing had a name on it. Amen. Nothing was named, but yet you knew what it was. And in the secular world, this is called branding, Marketing. It's called brand, brand something and make that one. When everybody sees that, they'll know where you are. They'll know what you got. They'll know what it represents. They'll know what it does. Amen? Amen. And these companies have done a masterful job at it. I mean, worldwide, you can go into almost any country on the face of the earth and show those few emblems right there and they'll tell you exactly what that is. Master of branding, master of, 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 of marketing. Amen. So let's put up the first note today and get started. What does your brand look like, and what does it represent? Because, see, you're a brand that represents something in the earth. God made you uniquely who you are. He put you on the planet earth in this particular time, in the space of history and time, and you look like something. And you represent something every day of your life. So what is your brand? What does your brand represent? When people see you, what do they immediately go to? When I see Nike, I immediately go to tennis shoes and sportswear. When I see Amazon, I immediately go, it's going to cost me money. <laughs> Come on. When I see Facebook, I look at some opportunity to promote Jesus, but mostly drama. Come on. Google, when you see that, you represent a search engine. You can find out anything. But what's your brand, sir, ma'am? And let me tell you something, your brand does usually basically two different things. One of them, one brand that I hope you are, are you an encourager? When people see you, do they see an encourager? Do they see someone who is positive, who is kind, who is loving, who is patient, who is gentle, understanding? Do they see someone representing in Galatians chapter 5 the fruit of the spirits that pour out of you when they see you on Facebook or they see you in person or in town? Or <laughs> when they see you, do they turn and go the other way? Or when they see you, do they hear gossip, slander, constant hatefulness, drama, cheating people out of business deals, lying, backstabbing, contentious, frustrated, pitiful, always a blame game, angry, disrespectful? 
I heard somebody say, let's hope not. There's only one way to guarantee that. It's not be that. Don't be that hateful, disrespectful, angry, bitter person, contentious about everything. But so many times our brand really does reveal what we are. And that can be good or it can be scary. Say amen to that. But you represent, your brand represents something in this earth. It either represents the kingdom of God or it represents the kingdom of the world. Yeah. But go ahead and put the next note up to make sure you understand this. We represent a king from another kingdom, Amen. and that kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Now, if you call yourself a born-again Christian, if you, if you proceed to tell people that at some point in time you came to Christ, you received him as your Lord and Savior, and now you're a son and daughter of God, then now you are a representative of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And you're supposed to represent the king and his way. I am not here to represent my own thoughts. I am here as a child of God to represent what my king says. Amen? Now, there are certain things about you sometimes that will just give you away. Your attitude. Your, you, do you know that your speech will even give you away? You would be amazed when I travel outside past Kentucky... People go, hey, you are from the south. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you from the north <laughs> or the west coast. People automatically know. I mean, you go overseas and they're like, you're from the southern part of the United States. I'm like, is it that bad? I literally was in California several years ago and I sat down to eat. Me and a friend of mine had traveled out there to, to go uh, attend a conference and meetings and, and uh we were sitting, and the waitress come up, and she was just fascinated at our voice. And she said, she said are y'all from Texas or Tennessee or Alabama? I said, we're from Alabama. I've never met a woman from Alabama. And she brought our food, and we're sitting in the booth. We're sitting toward the end of the booth right here, if I cross me other horse. And she brought, brings our food, sets our food down, and then she pulls up a chair at the end of the table. And sets down, and I'm, I'm like, okay, I know I'm in a different country. I remember going through customs in California and showing my passport, getting into the, you know, the commun I mean, the, 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 the nation of Calif <laughs> communist California. But I'm like, is this a tradition I don't know about? And so I didn't know what to do. I'm kind of like, okay, I'm fixing to pray over my food. Do I, I, do I, am I supposed to tip now or what? Do, you know, I'm serious. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I finally looked at her and I said, uh, what, you need something? She goes, oh, I'm just so sorry. Can I join you for lunch? Because I just want to listen to y'all talk. <laughs> and I'm like, sure, if you want to know about Jesus. <laughs> and she stayed for a little while. Then, of course, when I got deep about Jesus, she had to leave all of a sudden. But anyway, she had some seed planted. Say amen. amen. So you're, you, literally your accent can kind of identify you. Right. Now, she didn't know I was a Southern Christian. She just knew I was a Southerner. Some people know you go to church. And assume you're a Christian until you open your mouth. Come on. Now, another thing that's very synonymous with us as individuals is our name. Now, most of us have a name. Most of us got two. Some's got three. Some of y'all got four or five. I don't know. But you've at least got a first name. Most of us have a middle name, and then we have a last name. And then when you get married, you take on the last name of your spouse, your husband. Amen, ladies? Say that happily. Okay, <laughs> some of y'all hesitated there just a smidge. Now, see, your name is synonymous with who you are. Now, luckily, with a name like mine, there's not many of us around. And so when I say my last name, people kind of give a double take. And they're going to know that last name is something good or bad. Come on. Oh, that's them coots. Mm-hmm, stay away from them. Aren't you the preacher? I'm like, that depends. Is it good or bad? <laughs> if it's bad, no, that's my brother. <laughs> I'm the other one. It's real easy to pawn that off on him a lot of times. But your name carries who you are and what your lineage is. And some, some of my lineage in my history is not that great. On my dad's side, we had one of the biggest drunks in Coleman County. And any time something happened to police, that's the first person they want to know where he at. His name was Cush. Where's Cush at? So again, but you, you got a chance to build your name. 
But I don't want my name to be famous. My name, my likeness, everything about me is here to make one person famous, and his name's Jesus. Now, you can wear Nike, you can shop here, you can wear Under Armour, you can wear, uh, what's that other, Louis Vuitton or whatever stuff. It doesn't matter what you wear. My brand is Jesus Christ. That's what makes me who I am. That's what makes every born-again believer who you are. It is Jesus is who's branded us. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm branded by Jesus Christ. And I really almost wish that was the case. I wish that, I know there's going to be coming in the end times a mark of 666 across the forehead or in the right hand, but I wish when we got born again, when we come up out of the water, it was child of God. Amen. Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, written on us. But just because it's not physically burned in or wrote on or tattooed on doesn't mean it doesn't need to be on us. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, somebody say, that's who we're supposed to be. But your name matters. And when they call out your name, you may have had some parents or some cousins or something that destroyed your name, but now it's time to rebrand your name. It's time to turn those generational curses and bloodline soul ties. It's not honored God. It's time to turn them into something that now has a generational blessing attached to your name. Because they know, yeah, his mom and dad, his grandparents, or his aunt, his uncle, his brother, they may have went that way, but this one right here is changing. They're bringing the honor and glory of kingdom back to that name again. Everybody say, your name matters. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31 says this right here. And truly Jesus Christ did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not written in this book. One of the other translations talks about if they would have taken time to write everything Jesus Christ did, there wouldn't be enough ink in the ocean and enough pages in any book to fill what Jesus did while he was here in those three years. Countless things. This is just a small recording of what Jesus did. And we can't even grasp it sometimes. So he done these things in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But watch verse 31. But these things that are written, this Bible that we have today, why? That you may believe. We have a Bible today. You ought to read it. It'll bless you. Amen. And the reason we have this Bible, it is the Word of God. Amen. But it is the Word of God with a purpose for those that will pick it up, begin to read, study, and apply it to them. Why? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And, watch this, and that believing you may have life in His name. If I want my name to ever mean something to anybody, it better be through the name of Jesus. If, again, I'm not here to make me famous. I'm here to make Jesus famous. Amen? But you've got a name. I've got a name. And it's going to be synonymous with something. It's going to be linked to something. It's going to be linked to there's a man or woman of God or there's a man or woman who ain't a God. There's a slander. There's a backbiter. There's a gossip. Or there's someone who speaks truth and tries to live it best they can. And if they mess up, they fess up. And they always get it right under the blood of Jesus. Can I have a better amen right there? Amen. Now, everybody say, life. life. Now, notice the last part of that verse. The Son of God, that they may believe in you, may have life in his name. Everybody say, his name. Amen. So my life, if I want to have life, I've got to have it in the name of Jesus. That's why when Jesus teaches us to pray, close it out, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you speak the name of Jesus. Demons recognize that and they have to flee. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for that. So we've got this life in Jesus when we become believers. But what kind of life are we supposed to have with this Jesus? Our life, we're supposed to have the life that represents what we say we believe. That's a duh moment. Our life should reflect what we say we believe, what we sing about. I'm telling you right now that if you would just line up with worship, the words you are declaring out of your mouth during worship, if you would live that worship song out, your life would be radically different. Yeah, but what we're doing, we're giving lip service to God and our actions go another way. Yes, we declare you're the God that heals me, but we walk around sick. Oh, he's a God that can overcome, but we walk around defeated, even as children of God. Right. He can do sigh, he can do anything, but except for me. Why not start living what you say you're worshiping? Amen? Why not, if you're going to be a child of God, and this is God's word to you, for you, and to you, and through you, then why not begin to understand and get in his word? 
and let it come alive and become active part of who you are and your personality. Can I have a yay there? Yay. <laughs> now I want to say something that might sound strange, but I think we need to clarify this in today's time. You are not a Christian until you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Because I think we're living in a place now where everybody thinks they're a Christian and going to heaven. Yep. Yep. Come on. Oh, they're a Christian. They're going to heaven. Well, I think they did good. They're going to heaven. Not everybody wants to go. Every funeral you go to, when is the last time you went to a funeral and heard a preacher say, well, they're in hell now. <laughs> Hope they enjoyed your time here. Hope you enjoyed them here. They're in hell, burning in hell. We never hear that hardly at a funeral, do we? We try to preach everybody into heaven. And like I said, one of the biggest fads going on right now is when somebody dies, oh, I'm sure they're in a better place. Listen to me real closely. Hell is not a better place. And if they didn't go to heaven, they went to hell. But Jesus came where we don't have to go to hell. Ever. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. But you're not a Christian if you've never surrendered your life to Christ. You can't be. I mean, you can go to church all you want. You can do good things and help an old lady across the road, or you can give some money to build an orphanage. Wonderful things. Everybody say things. Yeah. All good things, but that doesn't make you a Christian. Christian. C-H-R-I-T. Christ. C-H-R-I-S-T. N. So the first part of Christian is what? Christ. Christ. So if you're not surrendered to Christ, you're not a Christian. You can go to a Christian church. You can have parents who are Christians. You can have a spouse that's a Christian. But you personally do not become a Christian until you've surrendered your life to Christ. And a surrendered Christ to life will never ever not represent him the way he wants to be represented because we know our life's no longer about us anymore amen? amen ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says this sometimes we misquote this scripture now i want you to pay close attention here it does not say everybody say it does not say for you were once in darkness most of the time we quote it for you were once in darkness, but then you came into some light. No, that's not correct. The Bible says, for you were once darkness. You were darkness. And if you've been born again, the reason the word were is in there is because you've been born again. You've become a Christian. You converted your life from hell to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. But all of us, at one time, we were darkness. We wasn't just in darkness, we were darkness. Because we were sin. We had sin to us, we had sin in us, and we had sin through us. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Help us, help us, help us. i got to fix something here. All right. But now watch this. For you were once darkness. You were darkness. Everybody say, but now. It doesn't say you're in the light. It says you are the what? You are the light in, in, composed of, one with the Lord. Understand? It's very important to understand. Don't, don't glaze over this. I was darkness. I was sin. I was the picture of sin. I committed sins. I had no forgiveness of my sins. I was good at it. We call it down here, we were raised southern heathen. But when I met Jesus and I surrendered my life to him, I now had forgiveness for all my sins and I stepped over out of that darkness that I was, not just in, I was darkness, and now I became the light of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because he came into my heart, he lit me up. And I pray that you or I never one ever get over that. And nothing can take the joy of the Lord away from us. Amen? Amen? So now, but now you are the light of the Lord. Now watch this. Walk as children of the light. Now the word child there means the Father is the light of all lights. Now the Father's light is in the child. 
In other words, I just don't bear my name anymore of my heritage on earth. I now have my father's name on me, and his name is lighting my path. Because my inheritance has just been inherited from the kingdom on earth. Let me read it to you in a different translation, in the Passion Translations, Ephesians 5, verse 8. Once your life was full of sin's darkness. Somebody say, you know, that's right. But now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you. Why? Because of your union with him, Christ Almighty. Now watch this. I love the way it words this. Your mission. Everybody say mission. mission. Come on, say it like you like it. Mission. mission. Your mission is to live as children flooded with the revelation light. Woo! So my mission every day that I get up out of bed, I got a mission to light up because of my Jesus. I got a mission to wherever darkness is at. When I walk in, darkness has to leave because the light has come. Anywhere you go, anything you do, you are the light. And where light is, darkness cannot be enveloped. <laughs> Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So your mission is your life. And what is the brand on your life? Is the brand Jesus or is the brand, I want to be known as a Christian at times when it's convenient. I want to be known as, as, as a Christian on Sunday when I go to church. But when I get to the job, when I get in the classroom, when I get home in my marriage, I really don't want to carry that brand. And I'm afraid that's what we've got more of that than we are. We've got dim lights. We can take these lights and we can dim them all the way down to nothing. And then it'll be total dark in here. But we have the light on. Why? Because we can. And it helps us see the path. Amen? Amen. So my life is now branded for a mission that represents Jesus Christ. And it's not just my life. It's everybody's life in here that has received Christ. If you haven't received Christ, trust me, you don't have to wait. You can come running right now. We'll lead you to Christ right now. Don't wait. Yeah. That's not an end of the service thing. It's an available 24-7 thing. Yeah. Say amen to that. Amen. But now here's the thing. See, what happens when you're branded by Christ and your brand becomes Jesus and his word, then you don't have excuses anymore. Right. See, I, I don't have a black or white version. I don't have a race version anymore of my opinions. Because love has no color. <laughs> Say amen to that. Amen. I don't have a rich view or a poor view anymore. Right. Come on. Yeah. I don't have a born on this side of the track view or this side of the track view anymore. Right. Now beforehand, you probably had that. Yes. Come on. I don't have a man's view anymore or a woman's view anymore. Right. Come on. Right. And as sure as the Lord's living... I don't have a Republican view or a Democrat view Amen. or an independent view or a Green Party view or a T or this or that. I don't have those views anymore. Over here in darkness, you have your personal views. But when you come to the light, you're only in one light. And this light don't change for your emotions. This don't light don't change because of your feelings or your upbringings or your past. You forgive your past. You come out of your past darkness and you come into the present day light. So what's my view? I have a kingdom view. Because yeah. I represent a king. Yeah. <laughs> Put up the next note. The reason we get branded by Christ with his light is Christ brands us with his light so we can shine into the darkness. Because when you come out of darkness, you don't go back. You don't go back. Now listen to me there. You don't go back for your friends. Right. Now listen to me. I know that sounds bad. It's not, I don't go back to my friends. I shine so bright to attract them. Right. The problem is, we in the church, we want to come over here and get a little light, but then we like going and hanging out in the shadows. We like to still dabble a little bit and, and see how much sin we can get away with and still go to heaven. No, you're supposed to be shining so bright because light attracts people. Light always attracts when there's darkness. If you're ever in darkness, you're looking for light. Are you not? Anybody ever get up in the middle of the night at a hotel or somewhere you stay that's new and you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night? 
You ever done it when it's pitch black? And what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to find the corner of that furniture with your little pinky toe. And then you're going to see if you're a Christian. You're going to see if what comes out of your mouth defiles you in that very moment. Amen? But what are you looking for? You're looking for anything of light coming through a window or any way to where you can see how to get to where you need to be. But we're supposed to be so bright that the darkness looks at us and says, let's go to the light. And then when they get to the light, we need to have something for them. Come on now. Listen to me now. There have been a whole lot of people in the plants, in the manufacturing, in the schools, on the colleges, at Walmart. They've walked up to someone with light, but because that person was not deep with the light, they didn't know how to lead nobody to Christ. They didn't recognize that this was an opportunity for them to pray. They didn't recognize this was a divine appointment to get this person to not commit suicide that day. You just talk to them like you talk to anybody else. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Well, I'm just struggling to get through the day myself. Oh, I don't want that light. If you're a Christian and you're struggling to get through the day yourself and you got Jesus, I don't want to be around you. I'll just go ahead and go on over here and take my life. Guys, the light pays attention when darkness approaches. And it doesn't let it overtake it. It still shines as bright. Don't miss these divine appointments that are around us all day long. Well, I'm not a preacher. Yes, you are. You're preaching every day of your life with your brand. Your brand is representing something everywhere you go. You don't leave home without your brand. Your brand follows you everywhere you go. Wow. Help us, Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16 says these very words right here. These are the words of Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus talking now. Pay attention. He says, you. Come on, point to your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Say, hey, look at there. You're in the Bible. You are the light, not just in your city, not just over yonder. <laughs> There's a good southern slang, over yonder. I was preaching, I think, in... Uh, I don't know if it was Africa or if it was in Guatemala or Cuba. So anyway, I was on one of my trips, and I said something about, and God, when God calls you over yonder, my interpreter looks at me, he goes, yeah, I got nothing for that. <laughs> he says, what is yonder? Let me rephrase that. Again, you're, 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 it'll give you out. It'll give you away. Your brand will give you away sometimes, okay? But you are the light of the world. Well, watch this. He, he recognized you're a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Go on to the next verse. It says, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Yes. Now, let me read those same scriptures again, and I want you to put yourself in there. See, when you don't see yourself in the word of God, then you act like it's not for you. Right. So let's, read, let's go back and do that again. Verse 15, hey, you, you are the light of the world. This is Jesus speaking to you. He's calling you his light. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's some heavy responsibility to know that we're walking with the light of the Father on earth as it is in heaven. That, that's, that's not no light weight, guys. That's heavy weight. But he says this right here. I look at you, and I see you just like a city, and I'm going to put you on a hill that can't be hidden. Come on now. He says, you are a whole city. You, you can light up a whole city, guys. You light up your workplace. You light up your school district. You light up in town. You light up at the beach. You light up in the, anywhere you go. You're like a city set on a hill, just like you are, sir, ma'am. That's you. Now look what else he says about us. And I'm not going to light you up like a lamp and throw you under a basket. God says, I'm going to light you up, and I'm going to cover you up where nobody can see you. Look at your neighbors. That'd be stupid. And God is not stupid. Amen. Can I have a better amen? amen. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to light you up just to try to throw you under a basket. I'm not going to save you where you think you don't have to live a Christian life. I didn't save you to be an undercover Christian. He says, I'm going to take you and I light you up. And I'm going to put you right there on a lampstand where everybody walks in the house can see you. Because I want them to see my son and my daughter. Because I'm proud of my kids. Have you given him something he can be proud of today? Amen. Have, you, have you had a week that he can look back and go, yeah, you're lighting it up. Now, I don't want you to have self-condemnation. We've all fought and failed, amen? amen? But overall, our life is going towards something. 
Amen? It's going toward more light. Amen? Yes. He said, I'm going to put you on a lampstand, and I want you to give light to everyone who comes around you. Everyone that gets in the district of your household ought to know there's a house of light. When they ride down the street and they ride by your house, that, that's, a, that's them Jesus freaks that live there. That's them Bible thumpers in that house. Ooh, that bunch, they cling to their God and their guns. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. This thing is giving me fits today, but that's okay. I'm going to preach without it. Everybody say, here we go. Now, let's go to the next verse. This is why the Bible says, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Do you know why it says, let your light shine? Because you don't have control of anybody else's light. Now, you can try to control it, but that's called manipulation, which you're now operating in witchcraft. Are you with me? Your light. Let your light shine before who? Men. Now, we want to come in here and give God glory. But God, <laughs> God wants the glory, but he wants men out there to see the light. That's why it doesn't say just come to church and let your light shine to God who already is light. He says, I want you to take your light to where men are dark. Let your light shine before men, in front of them, out in the world, in the workplace, on the job, in the schools, in the marriage, in the home. Don't just do it at church. And that's why I tell everybody, I love tongues, I love worshiping tongues, I love speaking in tongues, I love tongues, I love tongues. But if the only time you ever shatata makaka is on Sunday morning, you got a problem. And I got a problem with that. Man, I shined a lie Monday through Saturday. I pray in it a lot. It's not something I come to church and it's become a, a ritual Sunday for me. It's a lifestyle of a language that God has brought light into my life. Didn't mean to go there, but that's okay. Let your light shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works. Faith without works is dead. That they may see your brand. That they may see the name written on your head. Come on. That they may see your good works. Now watch this. And when they see your good works, the end result for us is that they turn and glorify the Father in heaven. Are y'all seeing this? But notice, it's your light, your good works that leads to your Father. Yeah. And I love that. It says, they may glorify your Father, the one whose now name you bear. Come on. And names are important because it brands you who you are. So when you get adopted into the children of God, you become adopted into the family, you get the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I come against Satan in the name of Jesus. Why? Why can I say the name of Jesus? Because that name has been put on us through our family heritage now. Because we're sons and daughters of God. We can use Father's name. My kids can use my name. Why? Because they belong to me. Amen? Amen? And then when they get married, they take on their husband's names. Why? Because they belong in that marriage. They have a right to the name. And when you have a right to the name, you have a right to everything that name has in its lineage. So when you get, gain a right to the name of Jesus, you gain everything in the heritage now. That's good stuff if you, if you didn't get it. But let your light shine before men so they see the good, everybody say good works. And they glorify your Father, who is God Almighty. Everybody say good works. Now, Everybody say good works. good works. Sometimes we think we do a lot of good works. But just like you cannot be a Christian without surrendering your life to the Lord Jesus, good works are not good works if Jesus and God is not involved in it. Come on, let me say that again. If God's not attached to the good works, it's not good works. It's good things. Come on, everybody say things. things. Sinners can do good things. I know, a lot of, I know a lot of sinners do a lot of good things. A lot of times they do a lot better things than most Christians I know do. The only difference is they've not surrendered their life to Christ yet. Everybody say yet. Yes. But we're calling them in in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. 
But see, I'm not called to do some good things to feel good about me that, that I can get some glory and feel good and sleep at night. I'm called to do good works for the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm branded by Jesus. My brand is Jesus. <laughs> Put up the next note real quickly. Your Christianity should be on display at all times. And by the way, it is. Good or bad. Everybody say good or bad. <laughs> your Christianity, if you say you've been born again and you've received Christ, every day, everywhere, everything is supposed to represent Christ. And it is your brand of Christ is on display before the world. And the sad part again, and I'm going to say it, I've said it a few times over the last several months and year. Today we have the branded Christian, the, the, the brand of Christian that drinks, the brand of Christians that get drunk, the branded Christians that cuss, the brand of Christians that gossip, the brand of Christians that get angry and, and flip you off in town and cuss you out. We got the adultery Christians. We got the fornicating Christians. We got the divorcing Christians. We got all this under Christ's label. Under Christ's label, and Christ says, these things are not even be named among you. That if you were to be accused, there would be no evidence that none of these sins are in your life involved. No. Is it me or did it just get real quiet in here? <laughs> We've got the unfaithful Christians. No. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Why don't you all that want to be radical Jesus freak Christians just come on out of the closet? Everything else is coming out of the closets. Why don't the Christians? Yeah. Oh, hey, look here. We even got woke Christians. I'm ready for the closet Christians that need an awakening of the Holy Ghost to come out. I'm not woke, but I'm awake. Arise, shine. Hallelujah, the Bible says. It's amazing today the church is hiding its Christianity and its brand. Because it doesn't want to be offensive. Because the secular world, and everybody say just the world itself. See, people today, y'all don't understand. In my growing up, if you was involved in sin, you tried to hide it. Right. If you were in an affair, you didn't want it to come out. If you were, if you were in, involved in any kind of homosexual, you, you sure didn't. You just you struggled with it. You tried to not let nobody know because it, it's not accepted. Right. Nor should it be. But today we're living in a time where people, <laughs> are y'all okay? People do not hide any form of shame because they don't have any shame anymore. Right? There's no fear of the Lord. As a matter of fact, they're taking what used to be in shame and guilt and that would lead you to someone with light and you would conquer that homosexual spirit and you would turn your life over to God and he would deliver you from that sin. And if you drank and got drunk, you come to someone who is in the light and they shared the love of God and you realize that the drinking wasn't your answer, but God was. Amen. And the drugs and the lust and the envy and the pride, you came to those who were in light because you were in shame and you, but now that shame is put on display. Yeah. We're proud of it. We're going to sin before the whole world, and now we're going to even make you feel guilty if you don't like what goes against God. We're going to reverse the roles on you. We're going to put the church to shame. We're going to shut you up. And the sad part is, in a lot of places, they're winning. The Christians have been shoved into the closet that all the gays came out of. Oh, you must hate homosexuals. No, I love homosexuals. Let it be on the record. I love those guys. I don't hate them. Now, I will not affirm that as Bible. I will not affirm a lifestyle of that. But the same word of God that tells me I can never affirm sin, lifestyle of any kind. Also, the same word of God, if you're branded by the Bible, I'm not allowed to hate them either. You understand what I'm saying? But see, they boxed us into a corner to where if you don't accept my sin, then you're a bigot and you're a hater and you're one of those. And, oh, we can't be called nothing. We just humble back in our little closets. Yeah. It's time to have the voice of love that speaks yeah. truth and love. Right. I've actually led two people out of homosexual lifestyles by introducing them to Jesus. Amen. Had two more prayed with, and one of them semi came out, but then it ended up, I think, going back in or bouncing, ended up dying a few years later. The other one never did come out. But I still love them. 
And I love them enough to tell them the truth of the Lord, word, Lord, the Lord God's word. Amen. Amen. So not only is shame now being promoted, now because of its prominence in people's lives and the not caring in the church, just sitting back passive with everything, and we don't have a brand. We don't even know what brand we are anymore. We just go along to get along. And because of that, you look at entertainment and sports heroes and all that. Now they're taking the shame and the reproach to God's word and they're promoting it and putting it on TV and advertising it. That you should be, everyone should be like this. So it's went from in the closet to out of the closet to promote it and advertise now. And it's not just that sin, it's any sin. Disrespectful to your parents is a sin. What do you see on TV? Kids constantly talking back to their parents. We went this past week, and I'm going to take a little time and go here. I went this past week to a thing where I really wanted to enjoy my time there at, this, at a museum we went to about Billy Graham's life. And you know the reason I couldn't enjoy it? Because there were 1,200 kids there that day. <laughs> Ages about 10 and under. And can I tell you, it wasn't the kids, it was the parents. Their parents were there. Letting their kids do whatever they wanted to do. Just have your way. Jump up, try to slap things, pull things off the wall. The curators of the museums trying to go down, please don't touch that, please don't, don't, don't do that. And the parents standing right there. Listen to me. Whoop that butt. If you love them, tear that tail up. That's the Bible. The Bible says when you spare the rod as a parent, you, you punish the child. Oh, I know this ain't popular. Do you know what the Bible really says about if you don't discipline your kids? It says you hate your child. You want to break the word of God down? It says those who do not discipline their kids, you basically hate your child and you're turning them over to a reprobate mind. It is love when you discipline a child. Now let them have some fun, absolutely. Let them be kids. But I'm talking about blatant disrespect for other people, blatant disrespect for a property that they're on. Just blatant. And the parents sitting over there off in another world. I may have to have a parenting class here for too much longer. <laughs> but did you whip your kids? Often and early. Every one of them got their little tails tore up. You know why I whipped them? Pure love. Pure love. And I ain't saying they, they're the best things in the world, but let me tell you something. Most of the time, they still know how to act. <laughs> Do y'all even have to ask if I got whipped? <laughs> My nightly routines, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, get you whipped, and go to bed. <laughs> but I didn't do nothing. We know you done something. We just didn't catch it. We're going to go ahead and get a whipping for it. <laughs> and I got every one I got, I absolutely deserved every one of them. I should have had more because I did do some things they didn't know about. <laughs> but people today, they're not hiding any shame. There's no shame. There's no respect. There's no honor. Yeah. It's just do what makes you feel good and everybody else sort of capitulate to what you want. Uh -huh. yeah. You're in a rude awakening when you get to the kingdom of God. It's like you're going to do that up there. Yeah. Come on, Ronnie. Get me out of here. <laughs> Amen. Everybody say the disciples. Did you know that in Jesus' greatest need of his ministry on earth, when he's being put on trial and he's going to be crucified and he needed support and prayer of his closest friends that he had poured his life into, every single one of those 12 disciples abandoned Jesus. Every one of them ran from him. Peter denied him three times. Judas betrayed him. The other one split out from him too. And he died by himself. They thought they were branded. They were the disciples. Now listen to me now. They had been out, sent out two by two and come back and said the demons are even subject to us. He gave them power when they went out of his name. But yet when it come down to it, they abandoned him. I believe there's a scripture in there that says, on day, the day you meet the Lord, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We prophesied in your name. We did, we did all this in your name. And he can look at you and say, I never knew you. 
Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You never let my brand get on you. I never got to brand you with my love. You operated in my power, but you never got branded my, by my life. It's in the Bible. Read it. I'm not going to leave you on a sad note. Because these same disciples, <laughs> he told them to gather up in a room and wait for a promise. And these 12 disciples alone, total of 120 people of his followers were in this upper room one night. And the Bible says they got in one mind and one accord. They come into unity of the brethren. And then the Bible says the heavens opened up and there's come a sound as a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole house. The whole house, the upper room and the lower room. Because all 20 wasn't in the upper room. They were scattered out throughout the house. And that's why the Bible says that it filled the whole house. Now listen to this. And then the Bible says that there appeared to them tongues as of fire above each one of them's head. What was that? That was the branding of the Holy Ghost set upon the head of the men and women of God that night. And the 12 disciples that abandoned Jesus turned and walked away from him, turned him in over to be given to be killed. The 11 came back. And after they got that branding in that upper room that night, they were branded by fire. Do you know they never abandoned the name of Jesus again? They never were ashamed of the gospel again. They never were ashamed to be associated with Jesus. As a matter of fact, they, they were branded Jesus. And they all went to a horrible death. And when it come time to crucify Peter, they were going to crucify him identical, basically, to Jesus. He says, I'm not worthy. I may be branded by him, but I'm not him. Hang me upside down. And they crucified him upside down. How do you go from abandoning someone to dying for them? The same way you go from just attending church to walking into your Father's kingdom every day of your life. You've got to be branded by the fire of God. You've got to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. So my friends today, what's your brand? Because you, you're, you're branded already. You're carrying a brand. Okay? And I know what people say. This is what I hear. Stand to your feet. I want you to stand for this one. Don't put the last note up yet, but get it ready. Get your hand on the keypad. This is what I hear a lot of times with people. Well, I know I'm supposed to, and I know the Bible, but I just get nervous. And, you know, I wasn't raised like this. And, I'm a, and here's what they begin to say. And, you know, it's not really my personality's not that outgoing. Well, apparently the disciples' personalities wasn't too good at the end of Jesus' death. But after the experience in the upper room, their personality rebranded. So go ahead and put up the last note for today. If God is not your personality, you need to rebrand yourself today. You need a rebranding. This was my dark brand. The gossip, the lying, the bitterness, it's everybody's fault but mine, excuses, and yeah, yeah, this, and yeah, yeah, that, and it's everybody's fault, and I'm not going to make my kids behave, I wasn't made to behave, da, 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 da. But I'm in the light now, I need to rebrand, now my brand says Jesus. I'm filled with love, joy, peace, happiness, the anointing, power of the Holy Spirit runs within me. I pray for the sick if they get healed, I lay hands on the dead and they rise up. Cast out demons in his name. Everybody say, that's in the Bible. So what's your story today? Just bow your heads. If you're here this morning and you've never been branded as a child of God, you're not getting the Journey Church brand. You're not getting the Baptist brand here. Two things we don't do. Number one, you will not join church today. Okay? It's not about the brand of a church. But you won't join church today. We're not worried about that. God will plant you as he desires. We'll teach you that. And number two, you won't become religious today either. I'm not branded under, under a denominational Methodist. Nothing wrong with those guys, but when you make that your religion, you got something wrong. Today it's about, is Jesus written in your head and in your heart? And are you going to hear, well done, or are you going to hear, depart, I never knew you? 
And if today you want to make sure of that, I wouldn't leave here today if I didn't know for sure that when I get before him, I'm going to hear, well done. I see my brand is on you. You surrendered your whole life to me. You didn't do it perfect, but you didn't try to rebrand yourself and go back. You kept Jesus on you. If that's you today and you say, I'm ready to get born again, we call it getting born again in the church. Just lift your hand today and say, today I want to give my life to Christ. Surrender my whole life. Anybody in this house? Anyone online? Maybe drop us a nine. Let us know. But how many today would say, I need to step my brand up. I need to get my brand more out there. I need to make sure that my brand is quality and it doesn't go backwards. Come on. And I'm lifting my hand up because I've got a lot more work to do. And I've not been the best representation all the time. But he's never failed me. And my goal is to shine the light wherever I go of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we ask that you come put the brand of the, the fullness of God into our lives. Understand that we are that light and we're meant to shine. And we're not meant to ever go out. So, Father, we just come and re, just rededicate ourselves to the brand of the Holy Spirit of God today. And that we will not be ashamed of your gospel. For it's the power of God unto salvation for, for us and anybody who will get around us, God. Lord, I love you, and I'm so thankful that Easter's on the way. But, Lord, we got right here today. You're alive right now. You're alive. You're for us. You're not against us. You made us your light. You give us your name. You gave us your brand. Say this with me. Say, I'm branded by Jesus Christ. And I don't ever want to get over it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching or listening to the Journey Church message replay. Be sure to hit the like and share buttons below to help us spread this message. We would love to connect with you. Leave us a comment or for more in-depth conversations about what you just heard, you can contact us by clicking the email link in the notes below. And be sure to check us out online and on social media just by searching Journey Church Eva. Now that you have been empowered by God's Word, go make a difference in your world today.